Good evening and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. Hey, we are in video number two of our study, The Spirit and the Restoration of Israel. And what I want to do in this video is I want to demonstrate once again that through the ministry of Jesus, when the Spirit had been placed upon him in fulfillment of Isaiah 42, Israel was being restored. Now, recall from Monday's video, Jesus in Matthew chapter 12, 18 through 21, quotes Isaiah 42, 1 through 4 verbatim, applies that restoration that was prophesied in Isaiah to Israel of his day, and through his ministry, through him showing mercy, healing, and restoration to the nation, he was in fact restoring Israel through the new covenant and through his, uh, his ministry. What I want to do in this video is I want to uh, build upon that fact by comparing Isaiah 42 with Isaiah 49. And if I can demonstrate that Isaiah 42 and 49 are parallel prophecies concerning the restoration of Israel, then that means that through Matthew 12, Jesus was not only fulfilling Isaiah 42, but he was fulfilling Isaiah 49 and the restoration of Israel. When? When the Spirit had been placed upon the servant of the Lord. Now, here, here's the thing. Here's how I know that Isaiah 42 and Isaiah 49 are parallel prophecies. They both concern uh, three elements, okay? These elements are this. One, Isaiah 42, 1, and Isaiah 49, 3 mention the servant of the Lord. This is Jesus. He is uh, Jehovah's servant. In Isaiah 42, 6 and Isaiah 49, 6, both mention that this servant would be a light for the nations. And in Isaiah 42, 6 and Isaiah 49, 8, this servant would be for a covenant to the people. So these three elements, the servant, the light, and the covenant, these all, all these elements are, are both in Isaiah 42 and 49. These are parallel prophecies. It is the coming of the servant of the Lord as a light to the nations, and as that servant as the light would establish and embody this new covenant for Israel. And through that covenant, through that light-bearing servant, he would restore Israel. Now watch this. Isaiah 42 and Isaiah 49 being parallel texts concerning the restoration of Israel. Go with me to Isaiah 49 and let's take a look at the text in verse 5 through 10 and see this restoration that was prophesied. Isaiah 49 verse 5 through 10. Listen to this. And now says the Lord who formed me from my womb to be his servant. There's the servant to bring back Jacob so that Israel might be gathered to him. So here's the restoration of Jacob, the gathering of Israel. When? When the spirit was poured out upon the servant of I in Isaiah 42 one and following. Now watch this. Let's go on. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God is my strength. Verse 6 of Isaiah 49, he says, Is it too small a thing that you, that's the servant, should be my servant, I just said it, to raise up the tribes of Jacob. You see this? To restore the preserved ones of Israel. Who are the preserved ones? This is the remnant. This is the righteous of Jacob. Through the servant were, they were being raised up. Now watch this. I will also make you for a light to the nations. There's the light that we see in Isaiah 42 as well. So that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. So at this time, when the servant was raised up to restore Jacob as a light to the nations, salvation would reach to the ends of the earth. This is the time of Israel's salvation. Let's go on, verse 7. Thus says the Lord God, the Redeemer of Israel and its Holy One, to the despised one, to the abhorred one by the nation, to the servant of rulers, kings will see and arise, princes also will bow down, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Look at verse 8. Thus says the Lord, in a favorable time, I have answered you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, this is Israel's salvation. Jehovah had helped Israel in the day of their salvation. How? Through pouring the Spirit out upon his servant, who would be a light to the nations, and who would bring the new covenant to them for their salvation. Look at this. In a day of salvation, I've helped you, and I will, I will keep you and give you for a covenant to the people. Once again, parallel to the covenant that we see 
to the people in Isaiah 42. Listen to this, to restore the land and to make them inherit the desolate heritages. The purpose of bringing the new covenant, uh, of making the servant a light to the nations was to restore the land. See, we are not talking about a geographical restoration of Canaan. We are talking about the restoration of the land, purging that land of blood. And we see that in Isaiah 26, verse 21, by the way. When the, when the land is purged of its bloodshed and the land will no longer disclose its blood. This takes place in the day of salvation. Look at verse 9. Say to those who are bound, go forth. To those who are in darkness, show yourselves. Along the roads they will feed and their pasture will be on all bare heights. They will not hunger or thirst. When? When the servant of the Lord had received the Spirit, when he would, when he would come as a light to the nations, bring about the new covenant in the day of salvation. They will not hunger or thirst, nor will the scorching heat or sun strike uh, them down. He who has compassion on them will lead them and guide them to springs of living water. That is the restoration of Israel, prophesied in Isaiah 49. But Isaiah 49 is parallel. It is a parallel prophecy, prophecy to Isaiah 42. It concerns the, the coming of the servant of the Lord as a light to the nations to establish the covenant when? In the day of salvation, in the day of when the Lord would restore his people, when he would gather the dispersed ones of, of uh, Jacob and assemble the remnants of his people. This took place in the first century generation when the Spirit was poured out upon the servant of the Lord, Jesus Christ, in the river Jordan. The Spirit descended upon him like a dove and remained upon him, the Scripture says. That means that the uh, receiving of the Spirit by Christ in the first century was proof positive that the restoration of Israel of Isaiah 42 and Isaiah 49 were being fulfilled in the first century generation. And that restoration wasn't national. It wasn't geopolitical. It wasn't ab about restoration of the ethnic seed of Abraham. It was restoration of the covenant people in Christ through their new covenants and the, the, the cleansing of their land, land through the forgiveness of their sin. And that's all I got for tonight. We'll see you next time on Answers on Eschatology, and we'll pick it up then. Bye for now.